David R. here. Today I'm going to talk to you about this book, The Evolution, Feminism's Reverse Engineering of American Women by Coach Greg Adams. He's also got another book called The Free Agent Lifestyle, and he has a couple of YouTube channels that I know of and a website. So you can find him um, all over the internet. So this book is about several things, but I'm only going to go into five of them. This book is about the impact feminism has had on the world. Negative impact, by the way. It's about how women use marriage for cash and prizes. And he talks about that on chapter five in Divorce Culture. It's about getting woke and going broke. He uses Gillette as an example. It's about the consequences of feminism. Like um, the writer from Sex in the City, Candace Bushnell, she is six years old and she's divorced and childless. I'll talk about that later. And it's about men dropping out of relationships, dating, marriage, etc. First, feminism. The fight for women's rights has evolved into a psychological war designed to take money from men, status from men, rights from men, and transfer that to women. Uh, men have been divorce raped. They have been disenfranchised by the family court system. Uh, consumed by debt, and forced to compete with women in the workplace. The author of the book says, The discovery that women could do a portion of the work that men were doing, as well as earning wages high enough to make them independent, sowed the seeds for the women's movement that we have today. At the beginning of chapter 3, the scoreboard of feminism, the author lists, Several ways that feminism has basically destroyed the world. 60 million plus abortions since 1973. That's a lot of death. 68% of the U.S. student loan debt belongs to women. 45% of women ages 25 to 44 work full time. And 85% of those women are working paycheck to paycheck. Women are responsible for 73% of consumer spending. Yeah, guys don't buy a lot of things um, that we don't need. Uh, women buy a lot of junk. They go into the store for one thing, but leave the store with 10 or more. 66% of women carry credit card debt. See, that's just compulsive spending, you know, things they don't need. Over half of all marriages end in divorce. Yeah, it's not worth getting married anymore. And 80% of all divorces are initiated by women. So it seems like women initiate the marriage, but they also initiate the divorce. <laughs> uh, once women hit the age of 35, their sexual market value drops significantly. Greg says what women really get out of feminism is a cat in debt. Now, the author said women hit the age of 35 and their market value drops, sexual market value. I think it can be much sooner than this. A lot of women party a lot. They sleep around. They get obese. You know, this age is a woman. I think by 35, um, in some ways... I think she's past the wall by then. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, not all women are unattractive at that age. Look at Jennifer Lopez. I think she's nearly 50 or in her 50s. I mean, she looks great, but she's got a lot of money. She's probably been on special diets her whole life and things like that. So it's partial hard work, partial um, cosmetic. So divorce culture. There's no coincidence that less people are getting married today. For men, the risk is too high and the reward is too low. 
You know, I mean, men can lose it all or nearly everything in a divorce. Uh, for instance, the Marvel actor Jeremy Renner's ex-wife is getting $30,000 a month in child support with shared custody. I'm surprised it's not more. Uh, I think she's okay looking, but I don't think she's worth $30,000 a month. Women have the state behind them, and if they claim they're unhappy in a marriage, they can get a divorce and uh, take half or more of the man's earnings. If she can destroy him just by saying she's unhappy in the marriage. Craig says, a woman could cheat on her husband, initiate a divorce, be riding the cock carousel a week later, move one of her new boyfriends into the marital home, then collect financial resources from the husband for over a decade. And women have no apologies for this. In most cases, the divorce is planned before the wedding. But you have to understand, she doesn't want to be the one doing the dumping because she has to be the victim in court. So what she'll do is she'll create this irrational environment so that he has no choice but to dump her. And then she can tell everybody how he got rid of her. And then she can play the victim and get a lot of cash and prizes. So usually the woman has found somebody else before the breakup. It could be a guy from her gym, co-worker. It could be just a guy she's been seeing on the side. So the media propaganda machine. Feminists have the support of local, state, national government, politicians. But they also have corporations behind them. And one such example is Gillette. Gillette sells razors. I don't know if they sell anything else, but they sell razors. And men are their primary consumer. So they create an ad about toxic masculinity. And they are basically anti-masculinity in this ad. And they view men as sexist bullies. They portray them as sexually harassing women. And all things masculine are basically degraded. But the campaign was a failure, fortunately. A lot of men protested this. They didn't like it. So the company lost billions of dollars. Greg says, The beta male managers who thought that handing over their billion-dollar marketing budgets to sorority girls was a good idea found out the hard way. So get woke, go broke. The consequences of feminism. Now, I already named a few consequences of feminism, like with abortions and um, debt and things. But here is a unusual one, because usually women don't admit that maybe they, they made some wrong choices. Usually they don't. But Candace Bushnell does. She's the writer of the book Sex in the City, and then it became an HBO TV show. The TV show was a terrible influence on women, to be honest. You know, these women in the show were just sleeping around, gossiping, partying. But Candace, she said that when I was in my 30s and 40s, I didn't think about it, she recalled. Then when I got divorced and I was in my 50s, I started to see the impact of not having children and of truly being alone. I do see that people with children have an anchor in a way that people who have no children don't. Now Candace is 60. She's divorced and childless. Uh, you know, sure, she could adopt. And I'm sure she has no problem getting men or, or even women. The author says... Much of her money is spent trying to deny the realities of her declining sexual market value. She admitted to using lip fillers, injections, and vagina rejuvenation laser surgery to pep up her declining value. I mean, I don't think she looks half bad for her age. But um, obviously, a guy couldn't have kids with her. Men are dropping out. One of those is college there aren't as many men in college as there are women. 
Yeah. Men are vulnerable to the SJW crowd in college. You know, if a guy and a girl are partying, they have sex, she could say that he raped her. Even though he, maybe he was drunk and she was drunk as well. It doesn't matter. He's the guilty one. He could get kicked out of college, go to jail, or whatever. Two, men aren't getting in relationships because of real or false allegations. Men aren't going to gyms because women are dressed in barely nothing to get attention from a certain kind of guy. But if a guy who is not so attractive is observing her, she could tell the staff and maybe he might get kicked out of the club. I mean, anything could happen. Men are dropping out of watching traditional TV programming like award shows and stuff like that. I don't understand why people watch award shows. They're ridiculous. When I was a little kid, my mom used to watch them, and I would have to watch them with her, but I never really liked them. The fifth one here is men are dropping out of buying frivolous items. I mentioned that earlier. I mean, we men don't have the need for knickknacks and things. Also, men are starting their own businesses because working with women could be a hazard. You could get sued for sexual harassment or anything that she might just want to make up. And finally, men aren't dating because dating is like a minefield. The author says you can get anything you want, but most of the time you end up getting more of what you don't want. And plus, dating is a waste of time and money. Time and money you could be spending somewhere else, you know? Well, anyway, I highly recommend the book. And I didn't cover everything, but I covered a lot. Anyway, that's all I got. Talk to you later. Bye.